Mike Zeman. I'm the president of Pacific Foundation. We're a drilling contractor out of Vancouver, Washington. We do a lot of work in Oregon, California, Idaho, Washington, and Hawaii. We're in Waikiki. Uh, we're about a block off the beach, the main beach of Waikiki. Uh, they're building a brand new Hilton Hotel, and it's one of the first projects of its type where they're going below the water table for the foundations. Typically in Waikiki, they build everything up instead of down, and we're cement mixing the site so they can go down below the water table without having any water enter. So basically you have uh, a lot of lagoon deposits here and dredge material. Waikiki was built basically they dredge material, sand and coral, and then built up the surface so they could get above the water table and expand the city. Uh, because of that, water is very porous and water flows through very quickly. And because of that, we're trying to take cement and like mix it in, almost like making a cake batter. But you're mixing cement into the water and the sand and creating a very lean concrete uh, that's semi-impermeable. It's not 100% watertight, but it's semi-impermeable so that when you dig, there's no water, at least controllable amount of water flowing through. In most cities, you know, we do water. We put in wells and we pump and we pump and we put the water back in the city sewer. And that's how we, we lower the water table around the site. If you have a very small parcel of soil, let's put the parking garage below ground. Let's put the footings below ground uh, instead of just purely building up. We can treat the site so that you can go below water table. Then you actually can go down and up at the same time instead of just building up. So one of the things that makes this job unique, if we're drilling 10 foot diameter shafts for a bridge, you know, when we're done drilling that shaft, you see the casing, you see the concrete, you see the rebar cage, you know what you've built. If we're drilling a soldier pile wall, you see all the piles, we're going down, you see it, we're lagging it. This job, we've worked incredibly hard. You know, we stare at CAD, we stare at files, trying to make sure we've like treated every small space, but we will have no idea if it worked or not, or if we miss a spot for about three months once they start excavating. We don't know that we've succeeded at all until the job is basically done. Uh, and that is a very different thing. There's been a lot of nights where you wake up in a cold sweat. I mean, more than the normal, you know, where you're like, oh my God, what if we missed this little spot? Hours of sitting on airplanes, studying CAD files, looking at little gaps, realizing that the way it was drawn up, uh, you would have missed a small area. So normally we deep cement mix and it's just a series of columns overlapping and you're creating a grid. Here it's a little bit different because they have these existing concrete piles in the ground, about a hundred of them, where you can't drill a cement mixed pile. There's these obstructions. And so we're having to jet route around all of those to make sure wherever he moved that we've filled that gap in with jet routing. And so it's really two completely different operations here, but having all these little spots that you can't possibly drill has made this job really unique and really difficult. Nordic PCL has been one of the best contractors we've ever worked for. Kirk, the superintendent, unbelievably hard worker, and the level of detail of his review process, unlike anything I've seen, I have to say, um, especially from a superintendent, from a general contractor. I mean, he painstaking review of everything. It's been really, it's been a great relationship. Uh, John, the surveyor from GeoSolutions, I've never seen a guy work as hard in the field, you know, walking through cement and mud day after day, and then going back in the office and going through the CAD files and trying to see if there's the smallest gap and then try to recognize it and offer a solution before it's too late. Just an amazing team. Uh, our own crew, I, you know, they've been out of town for two months. They miss their families, but they are working themselves to the bum. And at no point have they cut any corners. It's been really impressive. We've had some challenges on this job. Um, we got soil samples before the job started, and we ran bench testing to see how strong it would get. And when we came to the site, the soil samples they, that we got were not representative of what we've actually found.
But instead of uh, asking for more money, all we did is we went out and we retreated everything. You know, we, we re-drilled for a week and a half, trying to make it stronger, deeper, better, to make sure that there won't be a problem later. You know, it's one thing to now spend a week or so doing extra work, but if in a year from now, or six months from now, or three months from now, they were digging and the water was coming up, it might cost five million to fix. So for us, we looked at it as an opportunity, hey, we, we found the problem, and let's go fix it immediately so that it's not a bigger problem later on. The construction world isn't that big, and there's very few clients that you can work with. And so I think what makes us unique is we're not worried about trying to get a change order for an extra $5. We really, we want our clients to love us when we're done. We want to bend over backwards. If we're worried about a problem, we want to go fix it. We're not asking for money to do that. We just want to make it a great job. And I think that does separate us from a lot of people who, when there's an issue, they see it as an opportunity to get more money. And we see it as an opportunity to like fix the problem and become not a hero, but you know, somebody that they always want to hire.